Okay, so we have the F3, the S3, and the W3. The F3 is um, fishing focused, and it's basically our background, what we've always done, where we started with with Wasp when we did the original R&D, um, starting back in the early 2000s, and we saw a gap in the market where other players weren't working, and our customers were asking for better seafloor mapping, they were asking for better detection of fish in the water column, and they were asking to be able to have a, have a single solution to cover all of their needs. You get the exact same resolution you do with the F3, F3X, F3L, they're all the exact same resolution. It's just there's a lot more signal level, so if there's any, if you're trying to hit a really, really small target, you'll see a, a signal that's 10 times smaller, almost, in, um, than you would if you hit it with the F3. Depth performance basically depends on the, the temperature of the water. Um, this is probably the greatest factor as, as you get past um, hundreds of meters. So if you have got an F3, you're running at 160 kilohertz in your worst case scenario. Um, but you can see the sea floor down at you know, 400 meters kind of thing. Um, if, uh, if it's in reasonably good conditions. Yeah, I mean, we've got mapping at 1,000 meters. The main components of WASP is the transducer uh, for transmitting the 120 degree swath. Uh, we then do the beam forming, which means basically getting a resolution across that swath in the transceiver, which is the DRX. The transceiver uh, does the processing of the actual signal from the transducer and also does the data fusion for all of the sensors. And the reason that you need to use the sensors is so that you can reference any position on the seafloor or in the water column. The DRX, which is the transceiver, receives the data from the, all of our sensors, which includes the transducer, motion sensor, position sensor, processes that through data fusion, then does the management of the data so that it can be um, passed up to the PC, which does the visualization. Uh, the visualization is done using our own software, which is CDX, and that's a control and visualization. We have also integrated with multiple other third-party software, which may be used alongside CDX or as standalone, and that includes survey packages, um, fishing packages, um, post-processing packages. Um, we support well over 10 different third-party software packages. got very good range discrimination um, so you can pick up um, the difference between small target and big dips and probably tell you know you almost see individual fish in a school um, some people are quite good at looking at it and going oh, I can understand that's a 3d object and that's a fish school and then they can kind of see around it the other little blobs they can kind of understand okay well, that's a fish school and those are other fish around it you can kind of go, oh, I understand what that is. Whereas if you've just got 2D, you just don't have as much on a traditional sound. Some, some fishermen, it's really like gold that they can just go over an area and go, oh, there's a soft patch there. I didn't know there was a soft patch there in the middle of this area. I thought it was all hard. I'm looking for shrimp or scampi or something and they, they're on the soft area. Oh, it's gone to a toe over there. Oh, what do you know? Um. So the, the WASP package is enabled by the licensing. So you have core functionality, which doesn't require any licensing at all, which is uh, for the F3, which is the sounder and the bathymetry. Uh, the extra licenses allow you to have extra functionality using the data that you collect. Uh, examples of that are backscatter. The customer can interpret the hardness of the seafloor through a, back, a backscatter image, and that's basically processing all of the um, processing all of the sea floor for as well as position strength of the return um, we have water column targets which means that on the 3d chart you can also see the, the fish or other water column targets as discrete um, returns with target strength so you can see how large or how strong those returns are on those um, water column targets. Uh, we also support various um, licenses for exporting our data into different formats. Um, this is used where we don't, where we're working with uh, third party 
uh, software which requires different formats. Another license that we that we support is the SiteScan license, which is a different way of visualizing the C4 data, and it gives you a higher resolution image of the seafloor so that you can see any subtle changes in subtle changes in the contours of the symmetry. The wide band fairing transducer is uh, pretty much a refinement of the existing transducer. There's there's a few subtle changes and they're quite big ones. Um, we've We've actually made it a requirement for our survey system because we've improved the accuracy and various bits and pieces of it. The most important thing with the fairing transducer is the shape um, and that it is built so that you can just pop it on the bottom of the boat. It's, it should make the job of getting from, I bought my transducer and I want to put it on my, <laughs> and I want to actually go out and use my transducer a little bit easier for everyone.